Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures. Today I'm working on my hutch. I'm putting my finishing touches on the fall display and I thought I would take you along and share some of my ideas and the thought process. Someone suggested that I add some birch trees uh, onto the background. It's black paint. I can't remember if it's chalkboard paint or not. So I might be painting over this at the end of the season, who knows? So I decided to add a little moon here, a crescent moon. So what I do is basically draw a circle and then think about putting a letter C to create that crescent moon. And since the moon glows, I want all of it to be light, but I guess I want the moon part to be brighter. And then I want it to glow around. And I'm just using regular old white chalk, probably vintage chalk. And then you could continue to spread that out however you want if you want it to make it crisper. Then the other thing you could do is you could come back with some water to take some uh, chalk away, pull the black out to create the texture of the moon. Depends how involved you want to get. I have a wet Q-tip. And I might just add little dots, kind of twisting. Hopefully it takes off some of the chalk. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like when it dries. And then for the birch trees, when you draw a tree, you can definitely have a shaky hand. So the tree uh, doesn't appear too stiff and straight if you're trying to make it natural. And a tree is wider at the bottom than the top. So it doesn't matter if you start at the top or the bottom. I normally start at the bottom, but since I'm working around things, it's a little hard. And then I just have it a little thinner at the top and make it wider as I go down. And then I'll put a few next to each other. And then scooch over a little bit and maybe I'll have, so those are kind of connected at the bottom and then the one next to it, maybe uh, it will have a little space. So birch tree, it's white. And then the way that the, um, how would you call it? The bark is, uh, it looks like it has little striations. So a couple ways to do that. You could work on the lighter side, really making one side really light with the chalk and then bringing the lines over. So it looks like the dark lines are going into the white and you've got kind of a shadow side and a highlight side. And then I'm gonna blend it just a little so it's a little bit more artistic. It's like another little value in there. So you can see these I haven't started or I tried a different technique, but I think this one's a little better. Um, then you also might lighten the one outline. For the side limbs, you just wanna do the same technique where it's thicker at the base and gets thinner as it goes out. And then you can put little smaller branches just like lines. Just have it. And then maybe at the bottom, maybe they're just like little lines because they're starting. However many you want. And you can all thank Cheryl for this little tutorial. <laughs> when I said I didn't know what to do and I didn't really want to get things and have to store them to fill up this background, she suggested, I'm pretty sure it was birch trees, she said. Not just trees, but birch trees. So thank you, Cheryl. Okay, there it is. And uh, earlier on this side, of the birches. I started with the white, but then when I put the moon in, which is the light source, that's why you want to have the lighter part of your trees closer to your light source. And I like the little texture on the moon. It's not, you know, stark black. It came back a little bit gray, but lighter. 
This display is a lot of miniatures, and I guess uh, I've done a few things to unify the display. I have things that are repeated, colors and actual items. So I do have many green flower frogs holding up some of my pieces. I have this little strand of chenille pom-poms that runs throughout the display as well. And now the background has created a unifying uh, piece. This display is a combination of things that I have thrifted that I'm drawn to, along with one-of-a-kind pieces of art unique to our family. So this piece right here with the toadstools is a sculpture that I made in a broken vanity mirror. The pumpkins are by my children. I'm pretty sure my daughter painted them and then my son came back and added the little smiley faces. And then I have a few of these resin pieces. These are the earliest pieces of art that my father and I made together. I wanna say when I was probably three or four years old. And we would take walks and find um, insects that, you know, <laughs> were passed that were uh, on the grass or the sidewalk. So this right here looks like it's a cicada shell and we would get little containers that the butter would come in, pour resin in them, and then put the insects. And I think that a lot of my art has insects now. And when I thought about why I was drawn to them, it took me a while to figure it out. But I said, my dad and I did this when I was three. I can remember doing this on the porch. I can remember the smell. So I like to add that to the uh, fall display. I think that that amber color looks nice. It's something that's very meaningful to me. And even just that life cycle of things starting to fade works for the beginning of, of fall. And then other little things that I've thrifted, like the foxes. So in the back, I have the cover of one of those um, nature guides, and it really concentrates on mushrooms. And I have it next to my sculpture. This view that I'm showing you feels pretty full, but if you look at it like this, then it's just a tad empty. So one thing I have to remember, and I think this is a good tip, is you don't have to find more things to fill up the background because, you know, I've talked about this idea of going back and forth with having a nice display, but also not having to store a lot, is to just find things to create height. So I have that um, displayed on a flower frog, and I've picked up another one and I'm just going to put that underneath and that is going to give it about an inch more and help fill up some of the space above it. That gave it just a little bit more height. I could probably put another one, but I think I'll just keep it how it is for now. It's funny. I know that I do find a lot of flower frogs and at some points I think, okay, enough is enough. But even now I had to go around to a different part of the house and grab one so I could create that height. On this side of the display, most of this stuff is thrifted. I have some ornaments, walnuts and acorns, um, vintage, maybe even getting close to being antiques for the walnuts. So I associate that with the squirrels. Another little pumpkin. This is a metal toadstool. And then I have those on top of this little blue book. I like that blue color, thinking about the night sky, and it helps group the pieces together, gives it a little bit more height since they are tiny. Some orange ribbon, I just love the satin ribbon. And then on it, I have these little reels of Denison gummed tape. It says it's picture binding, but this one is the birch. And this is the birch, and then we've got a regular wood grain here, and I just have a little owl perched on top. These are some of my favorite things. These are little acorn tags, and you would get about 30 safety pins for 15 cents. I love that they're orange acorns, and then I actually do have some that have the pins on them as well. I need to put those out. Behind, I have another one of the, um, I don't know what to call them, sculptures that my father and I made. This one has a moth in it, and it's pretty raggedy, so we would never take live insects and do this to them. They'd all be ones that we found on our box that had passed already. 
And behind is a mortar and pestle. Uh, I like the color in here to brighten some things up with the natural wood. I got that at an estate sale. I believe my whole pile was $5. Uh, before I had added some of the brand new Ot lights. So that was a great deal because this is definitely from the 1800s. So I have just a few more things to put in here. We'll see if it gets a little too busy or maybe that's the whole idea is to just take a shelf or two and do it up and let your eye rest in other places of the house. I have two more things that I would like to fit into the display somehow, and it might go on that shelf or a different shelf. I had them originally there, but now that I've got the birch trees, it might be a little much. I have one more of the sculptures that my father and I made, and this one had one of those orange jack-o'-lantern plants, but you can see it doesn't have any color anymore. And I have this book I mentioned in my other video, probably a vlog, that this was an art book that my dad gave me and it has this nice white linen cover. So I thought it would be really nice to put a cabinet card, a black and white picture to create a nice mat around it. But then taking um, a note uh, or inspiration from the object, I thought about uh, built-in bookmarks. So I took some of that orange ribbon and to cut a little tail like this, all you do is fold the ribbon in half and then just make one diagonal cut. She's just taped on there. And I have other colors of ribbon that I might try, but I think it's nice to add a little bit more color into that display. Um, so we'll try the navy blue, we'll try the orange to see how it looks. I feel like it's too busy with the book and with the insects, so they're gonna go somewhere else in that cabinet, but not on that shelf. I still wanted a little bit more though. So I got into my ribbon stash and I pulled out ribbons that I thought the colors would look nice for fall. Uh, and so I'm gonna try this on the top of the cabinet. And I might do navy blue instead of the orange since it's not gonna be on that shelf where the orange is. I also thought a neat thing to do with this is you could have a book open to something that you like and you could have this on top and I don't want to push this down too much but maybe you have an interesting um, paperweight I find the old paperweights and I'll decoupage my own things or you could take a flower frog because it's heavy sorry I know I just bumped the camera I'm just brainstorming right now and then you could have one thing on this side that's heavy to keep it down as well I don't know pair of glasses on top of that just different ideas all of these ribbons are newer and if I use them in a project they will hold up but some of these are very fragile I've tried to use them and they really pull apart as soon as you put any type of pressure on them. Um, this one I love, but some of those natural fibers, um, if there's silk in there, cotton, just over time, they deteriorate. So the best thing to do with these is just to display them with their beautiful uh, graphic designs and appreciate them for their color and texture. So I had this in my little bin of um, ribbons to use but I've really found out that um, they're they can't be used there's no integrity to them so I'm going to put these into my display and that'll create just a little bit more height for some things and a little bit more interest but won't take up as much space as the book for the time being I'm finished I do need to get into other cabinets to see what I have so I'm sure I'll be adding a few things and I plan on making another video with just music in the background and you can get an up close of everything. But I thought in this video, I'd just share a little bit of um, my thought process as I was putting this together and share Cheryl's fabulous idea of the birch trees. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you in another video. Bye.